Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Billy Wilder Theater, home of the public programs for the UCLA Film and Television Archive. My name is Paul Malcolm, and I'm a programmer at the Archive. I want to thank you all again for coming out uh, to the latest uh, screening in our 2015 edition of the UCLA Celebration of Iranian Cinema. Tonight, we are very uh, pleased and proud to be able to present director Sepide Farsi's Red Rose. As I've been saying in a lot of these screenings, we were very uh, fortunate this year to find a number of amazing uh, Iranian films that cover a, a range of genres, including uh, works by new masters or acknowledged masters and new talents covering uh, styles and genres from drama, dramas, comedies, uh, documentaries, and thrillers. One thing that we do when we are programming this series is we define Iranian cinema somewhat broadly to include not only works made by filmmakers working in Iran, but also filmmakers working outside of Iran as part of the Iranian diaspora. Tonight, uh, we're showing a film that was made outside of Iran, but I think dealing powerfully um, and frankly with uh, contemporary events inside Iran. Uh, Mrs. Farsi was born in uh, Iran and has been based in Paris in 1984, or since 1984. Red Rose made its international premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival last year. And it's uh, her, the latest work in an award-winning career that includes uh, The House Under the Water from 2010, the documentaries Tehran Without Permission from 2009, and Herat from 2007, as well as The Gaze from 2006. We're very thrilled to have uh, Sepeda Farsi here with us tonight. So please help me uh, welcome her to the theater. <laughs> She's in the back. She'll come up in a few minutes to say a few words, but she's coming down now. Before Sepeday comes up, though, um, I do want to say a few words of thanks once again to express our sincere and special uh, gratitude to the Farhang Foundation for its essential support of this series. This series would not be possible without it. So thank you to Farhang Foundation. And now please help me welcome to the stage Sepeday Farsi. Shabbatun uh, Salam. Good evening. Uh, I'm very honored to be here and very happy um, to come to LA for the first time to show a film here. Thank you, Paul, Shannon, uh, Farhang Foundation, of course, and, and you. I, um, the film as I'm quite excited <laughs> you can hear me. The film is, um, happens in a, a very special moment for Iranians inside Iran, outside Iran, 2009 post-electoral protests. And, um, I wouldn't say much, we will have time to discuss it afterwards, but I just want to say that it was a big decision for me to make it and to make it this way. I hope you will uh, share the impressions we tried to convey and enjoy the screening. We will discuss it afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, I just have to take a breath myself. I just want to say the last time I saw this was on a computer monitor about a eight months ago or a year ago and seeing his face on the big screen and that amazing performance at the end kind of takes my breath away. So congratulations, I, I think it's a powerful film. Thank you, thank you. And thanks to the actors. <laughs> so um, we're going to do the Q&A in English. We usually have an interpreter, but you can answer questions in Persian if they come up. Or yes, of course. I get just an ask like a solution of Tajim than before I see man با کمال میل جواب میدم بعد ترجمه میکنم نه گفتم سوالا رو مطرح کنم بعد من ترجمه میکنم به انگلیسی اگه لازم um, but she will then have to interpret the questions for of course, me of course i so. would translate <laughs> but, obviously uh, well i wanted to by way of getting into this film i wanted to go to one of your previous films because this red rose very much seems like a companion piece to um, tehran without permission the documentary now, if you haven't seen it, it, you were in Tehran in 2008, and you shot very a very wide-ranging film around the city on your cell phone, just interacting and interviewing. I mean, people would just even come up to you and start talking when they saw you filming. Um, a, a very wide-ranging um, subjects and, and people around the city. It's a, it's a fascinating, and I think a really powerful documentary, but it was the year just before these events took place. And the structure of this film obviously is very connected to um, your experiences after Tehran Without Permission came out. Um, but that film was out in the city um, and all exterior. And you really did seem to capture a city on edge. I mean, a city looking for release, a lot of frustration, a lot of pent up um, anger. Uh, and I think also a hope for change or an expectancy of something happening. Can you talk a little bit about the experience of shooting that film and then we'll, and then we'll talk about how it fed into Red Rose? 
Sure. Yes, it's uh, very um, accurate what uh, you felt and said about Tehran, with the permission. It, uh, my feeling when I was shooting that, first of all, the reason I chose to do it with a ridiculous mobile, not even this generation, you know, much uh, less uh, resolution, was uh, to avoid all this kind of uh, supervision and, uh, you know, um, the, um, the big brother's eye and all that, and, and also to be close to people. And, and that really worked in the sense that, uh, yes, people were literally coming to me and, and, and talking, and I would say that nobody believed me. I said it's a documentary about Tehran, and they were laughing, you know, it, they, they thought it was a joke. Kind of. but, uh, but, but the distance between the one who's filming and the one who's filmed was really erased, literally. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what I felt was exactly a big frustration, especially amongst the young people, wanting to talk about, you know, their aspirations, and, and uh, I was really not surprised uh, when a year later we, we experienced this, because it was really there already in 2008. Mm -hmm. And while the form of it is very different, it's just the contrary of this. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, uh, that was all out, and this is all in, inside, and uh, interiors, and, and only the, well, the footage, the archive footage. Yeah. But yeah. So when, after that experience, you got this, you really captured this sense of your experience of what was going on in Tehran in 2008, when these events were unfolding, of the, the election and the Green uh, Movement afterwards, um, you were in Paris at that time when, when that was happening. Is that, you were, okay. I had just left Iran. I, uh, in between, I did another film a feature, which was the last to date that I've shot in Iran, which is called The House Under the Water, Khane Zira Ab, which is an adaptation of um, um, stories by Najdi, Bijan Najdi, for most of the Iranians know. And uh, I was just leaving, I mean, like a week before the elections, I left Iran with the footage. I just finished shooting, and I was going to edit in Paris. And I arrive, and this happens. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, and, and, and Tehran, without permission, was just going to go to Locarno. Right. It just hit the festival They circuit, didn't right. know. They had asked me questions like, what is this documentary you're making? They, you know, they asked me in the Etelot, uh, the Interior Ministry and uh, Secret Police. Like, uh, there was one session of asking me questions about what were my intentions were and all, and, but they hadn't uh, seen the film. And so I was out, that was going out, and, um, and I had my new film, and I didn't know what to do. So it was a big, I, I knew if, if I went back, I would be in trouble. Most probably, I wouldn't be able to get out. So the decision was to stay out and to do what I could from outside, mm -hmm. which led to this mm -hmm. after a year or so. Well, there's a lot of reasons why this film probably couldn't have been made in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quite I a few. Think of a few specific scenes, but um, so, but how did you how did you decide to focus on these two characters? This intergenerational dialogue that occurs. Where did that? I guess the story was from uh, Javad. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce his last name. Yeah, uh, Javad Javad. Right. Yes. The story was based on an idea that he had. But how did this? How did the idea of focusing on these characters begin and evolve into what we see today? Um, yes, the 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 idea and the screenplay is from him, and um, it, it came up as this, that Ali's generation is much closer to Javad's and I, my, my generation, and our experience, meaning having lived the repression of the 80s, early 80s. I mean, I left in 84, but I had already had some, you know, casualties with the regime. I mean, I had, sure. you know, and, and, and many other people of my, my generation. So, um, so it was really close to our experience. And in 2009, we, we saw that the, the other generation, it was the first time that a, a new generation was taking the ground with uh, literally no political experience, prior political experience. I mean, we had the Khatami era, but mm -hmm. it was still something different. Like rallies this wide, you know, uh, out and, and asking for something very specifically and all, it was a very new experience. And uh, Javad's idea was to confront these two generations, one who had been very active in a different way, and disappointed and suppressed, and a new generation which had hopes and all. And, and it made sense also to make the younger one a woman, because as you see also in the footage, women were very active. The young women were in this, at this point much more than before. Mm -hmm. And so it made sense to you know base this love story, and also the, uh, what we wanted to show was how the very intimate um, life and relationships of people 
gets affected by what's going out outside and and how their bodily relation also physical also that that's part of why we had the explicit sex scenes also because we needed to show it right. and uh, that's how it you know started well, that's an, another question I was going to ask, because it's not just a generational difference, obviously, there's a gender difference between the two. And aside from the politics of the film, which we can talk about, um, their relationship is something that you could not have shot in country, I don't believe. And But that is a very, I mean, I think that's a very uh, classic theme, this connection between the intensity of historical experience, political passions, and the way those kinds of passions also uh, mirror or parallel or also spill over into uh, sexual passions or erotic passions. I mean, there's a lot of films, novels, you know, that deal with that relationship. I was wondering how you felt, um, from your perspective, um, how that element of this film played into the themes you were developing um, in terms of the relationship between that political intensity and also the intimate emotional intensity that they feel together. My perspective as what? As what, a woman? What, what, as an Iranian? As no, as a filmmaker as who a filmmaker. is bringing that element into this film as opposed to just focusing on the politics, which it right. would have been probably easy to do, you complicate it. You make it, you, you make it more, um, you add this intense emotional experience to it that's personal and intimate that, while connected to the politics, isn't political at all, but they're sort of fused together in a way. I mean, how did you balance those two back I mean, and that forth? was a challenge because right. otherwise I would have made a documentary, you know, on the issue. Sure which I could have done, and there were others who did it. Uh, but the point was for Javad when he wrote it, and for me when I decided to make it, to, um, uh, exactly, to find this uh, counterbalance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what makes it uh, challenging. Uh, otherwise, you know, we would have had a political analysis or testimonies and witnesses, which, which we have had and we will still, because there's a lot to be said. But the, the challenge was to, well, break red lines on the political level, on the intimate and mm -hmm. sexual level, and, uh, and put these two next to each other. And that's what makes the, mm -hmm. uh, in my sense, the power of the film, if I, uh, we succeeded, you know? Right. Uh, because otherwise, a sheer love story or a sheer political piece would have been something else. The two of them together uh, is probably more groundbreaking. Well, it also raises questions about there's this amazing cut in the film after their first uh, their first lovemaking session, cut straight to protest footage, very violent protest footage. And of course, then later, there's some very intense and violent protest footage, particularly, sh I think, shot by a woman and she's being, uh, she's she's being assaulted. And then we cut to uh, um, uh, Sarah coming back to the apartment. She's been attacked. And then they have another, you know, an intimate encounter. It raises that question between, which is another theme in the film, their relationship is what everybody in the streets is fighting for, this kind of freedom. But it also becomes a way of them withdrawing from engagement, withdrawing from politics. It's like the diff it's the tension between needing to go out and engage to preserve what you have in this apartment, but then the apartment becoming, towards the end of the film, they just withdraw completely into themselves, into that relationship, into that intimacy. So, I mean, they think that, can you talk a little bit about the balance between political engagement and sort of personal, um, I don't know, uh, the difference between, it, well, I mean, I is this apartment a rallying point for her or is it, and it eventually becomes a, uh, a place where she retreats to? I mean, how does, how, how are you balancing those sort of tensions? I'm not describing it very yeah, well. Well, I, I will answer to the second part sure, of your question yeah, yeah. first and then, um, yes, it was, the beginning, I mean, we have doubts at the beginning of why she, why they come in is very clear why she, the phone is left there, whether it was intentional or, or accidental, that's something we might have doubts about. And as she comes back, uh, again, her character is a bit, you know, she's pushy, we don't know exactly why she's coming back, whether she wants to use him or, and then gradually this, you know, relationship and love story unfolds and, and she's probably pretty irritating at the beginning, which is um, done on purpose, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one who's laid back and all, and then, Gradually, and she's the one who has hope, who has all the energy, you know, uh, and, and, and brings in the input from, from the outdoor and all, and, and, and gradually the balance changes kind of. And so this apartment, which at the beginning is a safe place which to, to, to retreat to, becomes a place of despair also towards the end because yeah. that's what we lose. As time goes by, the movement is, you know, 
um, people are being sacked, and so so it becomes more and more. Though she comes back to be safe and to be with him, but it's not as joyful as the beginning. So that's for that. Yes. And then for the cuts you mentioned, um, uh, I tried to while we were shooting because uh, the excerpts, most of them were chosen already, and they were all. I mean, I knew which ones I wanted to use mainly. Some were changed afterwards. And that footage came from online footage. YouTube. That you found YouTube. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we don't have any, unfortunately, that's a disaster, a formal archive to this day of the events. Mm -hmm. So when it started happening, I, like some other people, uh, we started, you know, downloading mm, things from YouTube because some of them disappeared also because of hackers of the regime were there. They would, you know, I mean, it, it was a very um, uh, cyber war also. Mm -hmm. Videos were uploaded, they were taken away. I mean, so... Uh, and that was the main source we had, and we still have, because like BBC VOA, they didn't hold any kind of archives, visual archives, which is a, it was a total disaster. I, d I don't know why, but Sorry. it is so. So anyway, the, that's where I got them from, and we worked on them, on the looks of them, mm -hmm. to, to make uh, it relevant to the film. And the idea was to make, um, how, how should I put it, uh, organic cuts, you know? Uh, not that we have archive and we have fiction. We have archive and we have. It is so, but I mean, during the cu with the cuts and with the sound, um, uh, during the editing, um, I really pl uh, try to play in a way that they really uh, melt into each other, you know. And uh, some of the elements you pointed to, for instance, yeah, the red nails or the red rose. I mean, there are elements which come from the footage, documentary footage, and. Mm -hmm. um, delve in the fiction, so it really kind of joins the two together. Well, that, I mean, that's what I think makes the film so powerful and I think so complex is the emotional intensity of, of the intensity of the emotions in their intimate moments really bleeds over into the documentary footage before you even really have time to process the cut. So we were experiencing multiple emotions um, and, and different sort of um, the personal and the historical, you know, moving together at the same time, which I think is what makes the film so powerful in terms of its response or the response, the response that it engenders. Um, going to more practical questions, let's talk about the um, uh, the, sh the set, the shooting location, and um, bringing the cast together. The apartment is amazing. I mean, it's a very nice apartment. But where did you sh where did you shoot the film actually? We shot in Athens, in okay. Greece. Um, I had already worked in uh, in Greece, and I know Greece pretty well, but um, no but. Uh, and Athens is uh, has some resemblances to, to Tehran, certain neighborhoods. Uh, we have the mountain element which is present, we have the lights, there are the sounds, there are some architectural elements. Now, paradoxically, this is all indoors, so you don't see any of that, apart from the daylight and the sounds which we had in the background. Uh, but I think emotionally it made sense to shoot it in Athens uh, as opposed to, I don't know, Beirut or Istanbul or other possible cities. Right. And uh, working with a Greek uh, crew also at this point of the history of humanity, I think it's a kind of act of resistance in a way also because it's something, yeah, something is going on in Greece which is, you know, uh, kind of similar to what we are experiencing in other places and, and in Iran. So that was also a point. Mm -hmm. um, and the lead actor, uh, he's unique actually. I think he's half Greek, half Iranian, lives in Athens. Um, so, you know, I mean, we had several reasons to work there. Well, I'm going to turn it over to the audience in a second, but I have one more question. Just specifically about the, the production design of the apartment space. We learn more about him and his backstory as as the story goes along, but there's a lot of clues on his bookshelves, on his walls, on, in, uh, on his record player about who he is and where he comes from. A lot of them, I mean, I recognized uh, 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 Farouk Faraksad, the poet and filmmaker, the poster, the song I didn't recognize, a lot of the books on the shelf obviously were in Persian. Can you speak about how you layered that space to give sense of who he was and his personal history without talking about it, it's just all there present? Yes, sure. Uh, it was very important for me as we were uh, doing the pre-production to make a film um, as much as I could um, that uh, had an Iranian soul, you know? 
it was obvious that we shot it elsewhere, uh, abroad, but I wanted people, the Iranian audiences or, or the non-Iranian, when they were watching, not to say that, ah, oh, it's one of those other, you know, like yet another piece made abroad for, you know, I wanted the feeling of it to be correct. And we made as much as we could, and I, th I hope we, we succeeded. So the um, set designer was Greek, but we had a, um, I was there, I couldn't go to Iran, but I was sending somebody, I mean, there was an advisor who would go and I would instruct to bring items and to, uh, you know, who made several trips and, and we really tried to, to guide the set designer, I mean, team, mm -hmm. to make the space very Iranian, yeah. you know, as much as possible. And then uh, the character building was that, yes, uh, Ali is a guy like, approximately 50 years old, who has experienced the revolution, who's a left wing and all. So there were clues to give uh, in terms of, as you said, exactly books and, you know, Mahisha Kuchulu, the little, um, I mean, black fish and, 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 and Farooq and, and song, which Iranians, of course, um, what relate to. the song to. for my ignorance? And what was the song? What was the... The, the Chesh is, is, is a song by Bijan uh, Mofid, who's a... Um, who's a composer, uh, director, who died in exile in New York as well, and this is a beautiful song, which was, yes, uh, composed for um, a piece he wrote, a play. Uh, he, he sings it himself, and it was uh, done for Moho Palang, uh, a play. He's most known for Shahar Ghesse, which is the, the masterpiece he, he made, but he made other plays as well, and this was for the other play, who, and he, com he sang it himself, uh, performed it. And it's a, it's a very emblematic song. So um, when they were singing together, it's kind of like, well, yeah, maybe nostalgia, maybe hints to what who he is, exactly. And um, But it's also very interesting, the connecting point between the two generations, too. She knows the song as well as he does, so they're very connected in that moment. Um, questions from the audience? Let's go right down here in the front row. There's a mic coming down, so wait for the mic to come down. Thank you very much for this beautiful movie. I have um, a question. I, it was obvious that you are putting two generations uh, with the idea of change in front of each other, which this idea was kind of very different at the time. And uh, it appeared to me that the Sara is a symbol for this new generation. I might be wrong. But at, at some elements, I, I could not r relate to Sara as, as a people of my generation. Mm -hmm. uh, so this question came to my mind, how the character of the Sara came to the existence. I mean, you mentioned that there were some people behind the scene helping you. Is that a personal story that somebody told you? It was your from the vast observation that you had in the Iranian society? And uh, the other question that I have is, you, where you were making this movie, you knew that you were not going to go back to Iran. And I wanted to, if you explain that, how did you decide that, all right, I'm going to make it, and I'll just take this car. Um, OK, to answer your first question, yes, I, uh, oh, first of all, it is, a, uh, as much as we have documentary footage in it, it's a fiction. So each one of the characters stands for a fictional character. Uh, rooted in a generation and in an era, but the in no way representative of a full, you know, uh, generation. That is, I think it's clear for me. I, I really want to specify that. So Sarah is uh, maybe on the more most radical side of the young women who are outside. I mean, she's one character. She's very radical. She's very outspoken about the way she wants to be and live her love life and, and dispose of her body and all. And uh, many other people were different. It's true. So. I, I, I never, you know, I don't claim it's she, she belongs to that generation, but she is one amongst, you know, many. So that is, um, and I, how I research about her, um, I, as I said, Ali's experience is more closer to mine, so I had more elements in hand. For her, um, I interviewed a lot of um, young people who had left Iran uh, just after the elections, so, and mainly girls, of course. Uh, I did many interviews to ask them specific questions of how they were and what they felt, what were they, they were doing in those days. And, you know, I, uh, I really had many interviews in Paris because many of them, you know, came through Paris. And um, I also got elements uh, inspired by Nahal Sahabi, whom you certainly know. You know, she's a young lady who committed suicide uh, in uh, circumstances... Uh, 
directly connected to the repression after the, and she had a blog, she held a blog, and I, I took some lines from her blog, there was a Persian Kiwi, the, the, the Twitter person, you know, and the tweets are from the, the timeline, the actual timeline, yes, apart from one or two maybe, the rest are actual tweets of Persian Kiwi, so, so there were lots of elements that we tried to build, um, you know, around that um, character. And to answer your second question, uh, yes, it was obvious that uh, I could not go back to Iran, and also the actors, both actors, and uh, for some time until things changed. But it was a choice. I, I have made a number of films in Iran, and I love my country, and I really loved and enjoyed going back there to work and all. But at some point of my career and my life, I, I thought this was uh, something to be done. It meant more for me to do it and not be able to go back rather than you know doing it it is a it's a personal choice it was a strong moment but uh, we uh, i speak for the others as well uh, uh yeah chose to do so so <laughs> other questions let's go right here on the three seats in the uh the movie uh, takes a great deal of documentary from the Green Revolution, or Green Movement. And then you have these two characters. The Green Movement has two dominant uh, paradigm or two dominant interpretation. Uh, one is the regime's in interpretation, and one is the public's interpretation, whether the young, old. With their differences, there are really two major uh, interpretation of what what happened, and you have these uh, two sides: the, the document documentary, and then the story of the two generation individuals involved in this. How these two are interacting with each other. At the end, I am sitting here and trying to figure out which one of these paradigms <laughs> in this play are c working. And to what extent and in what way organically, if I use your own word, are interacting with each other. I hope you help me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, it is, a, it is a, um, an interesting question and it's um, hard to answer. Uh, uh, what I can say to start, uh, to attempt to answer it, is that I didn't try to be judgmental to say that, okay, this is the end piece of the story because I think first of all we don't know uh, to this day we know that okay that part of the movement did not succeed to to um, achieve its goals but um, we know certain things we know that there was repression we know that there was hope and then despair we know that uh, there was lack of leadership there was lack of you know um, we had a goal we I say well I think all Iranians were hoping that so I'm, I'm putting myself inside so we were hoping for things and we didn't succeed for several reasons. And the analysis is very complex. I mean, we're still, uh, many people are still trying to analyze. So I'm not sure, and I didn't, uh, never thought I would try to give an answer, a specific answer of which interpretation I was trying to um, prove right or wrong. You know, I think we see the repression, we see the hopes, uh, we see the takes, and we see what we see at the end of the film is also something which happened very often, you know, those, um, the contrition and, and the confession. So um, it's an open story, I think, for me. I don't have an answer to give you. Uh, I don't know which paradigm, and you know what I mean? I, I, it's an attempt to try to understand. I would say. Questions from the audience? So right over here in the aisle. Uh, thank you for a beautiful movie, very unlike other Iranian films I've seen. Uh, I know, or at least in my mind, there is, uh, with art, there is what the artist is trying to convey, and then there's what the audience puts into the art. Sure. And uh, the, the thing that kept coming to my mind is, why the title Red Rose? Uh, I have in my mind what I think it is, but I'm not going to uh, put that in your head. I'd just like to know why you, you know, how that's connected to the movie? Um, the very simple reasons. Um, the video where you see Zahra Rahnavard, Musavi's wife, uh, holding that red rose, uh, was one of the first excerpts I had chosen for, 
to use in the film. And um, it was the element also, the, the very material, the only specific material element which was brought from the archive footage to the, into the fiction. And, and it has, you know, uh, maybe, you know, a charge of romanticism in it and, and hope and, you know, what all we had. And then with the rose uh, kind of dying towards the end, it was all these, you know, uh, elements probably combined that um, led me to the, this title. Well, there's definitely the, a back and forth between a very romantic, idealized, e even, I, I don't want to say naive, but a very romantic, idealized vision of politics and love that kind of both of them come kind of crashing down <laughs> towards the end. And the, the rose definitely represents that kind of romantic ideal. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, in the back, back row. Hi. Uh, <coughs> First of all, thank you for nice job. And uh, I have a question. I don't know if I can bring it up or not. Uh, it was two movie. One was recent. It was uh, Rosewater. Recently was showing in here. And the other one was the unbearable lightness and being mm -hmm. uh, by uh, Milan Kondra, which is translated from Borasi. Uh, this movie just remind me some elements that is take me to that two movie. How much these two movie affected you or uh, a guy who wrote this uh, script? Um, am I doing, am I just, uh, um, my question is silly or not? Um, <laughs> no, no, of course not. Um, okay, Rosewater was made um, exactly when we were making this. Uh, I saw the film in Toronto when mine was being, being shown, so I didn't know the 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 um, common element is the movement, the green movement, and the repression. Um, but that movie is for those who've seen it is a very very different one, and I I didn't know it when I was making this because it's uh, contemporary. They're contemporary. Um, the unbearable lightness of being. I'm lacking the name of the director, but it's a, an adaptation of Kundera's book, of course. Mm -hmm which I had read and I had seen when it came out. Uh, but I don't think it was... Um, I un understand your comparison, it's interesting, but I don't think it was a source of inspiration when I was making this. But, you know, you have all these elements in your head when you're working, so... Were there any specific films that you were thinking about when you were, when you were co-writing the script and thinking about the, the shots and the, the storyline? You had mentioned someone had compared it to um, Last Tango in Paris. Yes, <laughs> yes. I had that comparison in one of the Q&As, and uh, why not, of course. <laughs> it is a film that we watched with Mina mm -hmm. Cavani. She came up with it, and of course I knew the film and I'd seen it many times, but as a model of uh, how far she was, you know, thinking of going and, like, to, because it was hard, you know, for her especially, for me too, for all of us, it was hard to, to, to do the sex scenes. It's not obvious, uh, but for her specifically. So she came and was like, let's watch this. And, you know, so it was this piece of courage for her to, <laughs> you know. And uh, I don't think I was, as I said, you have all these films and, and, and experiences in your head when you're making or writing or something, but it, there was no specific source of inspiration. But maybe The Last Tango is, yes, uh, something to be cited. Well, when you're shooting a film all on the single set or single space, um, there's always the danger that it might come become too theatrical. Was that something you were concerned about? I mean, some filmmakers actually court that. They like the theatricality of, of the space, but was that something you were thinking about, how to avoid it feeling too stage-bound? Was that, I mean, I don't, feel, I don't feel like it does. I mean, the film moves really well, I mean, and um, it always feels um, completely cinematic to me. But was that something you were concerned about? Or it was about? a challenge. It was a challenge because the space was um, a real loft which we turned into um, um, a set. We designed it and we moved you know, walls and, you know, but still, at the end, it was a limited space and, and, and we had to come up with uh, you know, ideas of how to do the shots uh, to make things dynamic, to keep the dynamics. And then, of course, the um, cuts to outside helped a lot. Mm -hmm. But actually, when you think of it, it's like maybe six or seven minutes only of them in the film. It's very little. Uh, 80 minutes is fully indoors. And that was the whole challenge. And the DOP, Pan Pandelis Manzanas, the uh, Greek DOP, was great. He was very inventive. And I think he did a very good job. Uh, 
one of the things we d we had considered also um, to do um, um, green screen, blue screen, meaning to to uh, be able to show Tehran, you know, to see Tehran from the windows. And at some point, we very early we decided not to because. Uh, we wanted the daylight, and um, I thought, okay, we wouldn't see exactly from the windows, but it's better to make clear cuts. If we are out, we're really out in Tehran, and if we're in, we're inside, and we don't see. It's blurred, or it's, you know, or it's night, or... So there were choices which were made. Uh, this is not exactly to, I mean, regarding the dynamics, but um, yeah, it was, it was a risk, true. Other questions? Right here in the aisle. Uh, actually, um, it's, it reminded me of another film, but I want to talk about the, the, the challenge of shooting in one location. And um, I was thinking of this is not a film. And in one case, you have a man who is stuck in his apartment because he's in house arrest. And you make the connection, you have a man who is not in the house arrest, but we realize that he has been through repression and has decided out of disenchantment with politics to actually stay. And we only gradually realize that food and, and cigarettes are being delivered. And it, of course, reminded me a lot of, of uh, the moments when also the outside world intrudes. Uh, I'm wondering if, if you had uh, maybe unconsciously this, this film in mind and if you can talk about the, the huge differences as well as the, the, the similarities. Not really, no, I had seen that film, of course, but um, no, I don't think it was a, uh, an inspiration mm, because Panahi's film is, uh, I don't know, the treatment and um, the way he, he staged his um, uh, restrictions um was not the way i wanted to to work so i'm i'm not sure but uh, yeah i think it, there are more dissimilarities than i mean or dissemblance that resemblance I, I i don't know exactly but um of course yeah one thinks of that as well um i okay maybe i can answer this way my point was to create and that's also to go back to what you said the only way, I think, of getting away without the audience getting bored by 80 minutes or an hour and a half almost of an indoor space between mainly two characters or sometimes one, because he was alone also a long time, was to create a tension and to keep it. Uh, whether it was by intrigue of losing her, is she coming back, is she gone, who's going to come, who, who is knocking on the door, um, you know this this whole and 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 delving out and coming back, but very um, knowingly keeping this tension that this apartment seems to be like a, a, an island, uh, you know, but it's not actually at the end. And we 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 gradually, you know. Well, the delivery guy was my prime suspect for event later in. He came in and was looking around so much, but he was obviously the false flag. <laughs> but. Um, any other questions? The oh, yeah. nosiness of people in Iran, yeah, which right. we know, you know, it's like, you know, so how does it? <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? Right here. Thank you very much. Very much. I want to ask you the question in Farsi. خیلی ممنون از دامادی که کشیدین شخصیت زنان و سمان توی این فیلم خیلی جالب بود. مخصوصا خود سارا رو اگه میشه توضیح بدین که این به قصد بوده که شما اصلا هیچ چیزی از گذشته و بعدش هم صحبتی نکردین البته زن خود همین علی و حتی اون خانمی که اومدن و رفتن همه این تعلیق رو داشته احساس میکنم شاید با هم بوده به حال پاسخ شما رو میشنم خیلی ممنون I'll translate first um, the lady wants to me to um, explain more about uh, Sarah's character uh, and the fact that hers, as well as the other women in the film, um, are somehow in suspended in a way, and we don't get much about, um, I mean, much many elements about their lives, and, and especially Sarah. Uh, we don't know much about her till the end of the film. And was that done on purpose or not, and, and, and how? 
or why? Um, yes, that was done on purpose in a way because the anchor of the film, uh, I mean, the, both characters have equal importance, um, but the, um, the anchor of the film was Ali's character and Ali's place, and she was like um, a satellite which was getting closer and closer to him, you know, and uh, it didn't really matter, as she says in that scene after the second time they have sex, after the uh, second love scene, they, um, they're arguing she's getting ready to get out. And, and um, she says, what oh, does it matter what you know about me? You know, I could be Mina, I could be Mehri, I could be, it doesn't matter. And, and he says, why are you coming here? And she provokes, of course. She says, I want a bed with a man in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the point was to show the rebellion and, um, uh, yes, the rebellion, Osian, I would say in Persian, um, of of her, of uh, the character of Sarah, and from Simin, the friend who comes, the lady friend who comes. Actually, the other thing I tried to do was to show a spectrum of different kinds of women. So we have this young activist, very kind of rebel. We have uh, the older uh, woman who is almost uh, the same age as ex-lover, maybe, and artist, you know, different. We have the cleaning lady yet another um, social class, and we have the wife whom we don't see, but we just uh, kind of sense, and we have uh, Amini's wife, who's more, you know, um, yet another kind of a woman's character. So it was interesting for me, I mean, and, and Javad, we, we really worked on the, you know, um, to, to, to give a kind of a wide spectrum of, of women, because the complexity of the Iranian society is that we have all of these, um, mm -hmm. um, and more even, you know, different types of women. And um, so that was uh, how we worked around the characters. And all the women in the film actually leave the apartment. They get to go, they go out into the world where he is very um, uh, paralyzed by his own previous experience. I mean, I think Ali, Ali's character is, is tragic in that sense that he had retreated from this world that he was so wounded by. And the moment that he felt, you get a little glimmer that he feels possibly ready to re-engage, even though he's grabbing his passport. He's and he, his history catches back up with him. And he, while the other characters, maybe their fates are known or unknown, we, see, we follow his fate all the way through, which he's basically reliving. He's trapped in the past. He can't, he's just sort of stuck in this moment of um, horror and despair, I mean, at the end of the film. So I guess my question, if I had a question related to that was, as a takeaway, do you feel particularly hopeful or is this a particularly pessimistic film? I don't want to be too reductive about it either because it's very complicated, but. Um, I wish I could say, I don't know. <laughs> and you don't have to either, I mean. Um, I, I, I wish I could be hopeful. At this mo point of time, I'm very pessimistic about what's going on in Iran right now, but we cannot be pessimistic all the way around. I mean, okay, we've been, waiting for a change for <coughs> almost 36 years now. It's like, sound comes, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but it will happen. I, I, I still have hopes. I, I have hope, I have faith in, in the youth because those who were out on the streets, some of them left, some were killed, some were tortured, many were tortured, but all of them didn't disappear. They're still there. Mm -hmm. So they will come out again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure about that. Now it might be later, it might be, more peaceful and pacifist might be more violent also because they were disappointed by this, mm -hmm. mm, you know, um, 2009 movement. So I don't know, that's very hard to say, but um, I think we have to keep hope. <laughs> well, I think definitely the film leaves you with a sense at, regardless of the ultimate result of the Green Movement, uh, the, the, that, the politics of that moment, what they did share in that moment was a, a very deeply human, intimate connection, which is, what all of the, uh, what all of it is about. I mean that, that that connection still seems even in the final moments of the film where they're asking her to betray him or they're asking him to betray her, and he can't really bring himself to do it. There's something that's being preserved in that moment because he that connection that they have is what it's all about, which perseveres regardless of the individuals involved. It seems to me so. I yes, in that replay which he right. goes through because he's being tortured again. We know that he has been already, and this is a replay of that. Right. The love element, I think, is what makes the difference, or the hope through that girl, which makes him resist. Because the idea way. is in 88, he 
can he basically recanted and and I mean I'm I guess I'm gonna get it, but this time he there's he has something still to cling on to at the very fight end. Fight for yes, yes something I, personal to yes, fight for. Which maybe. I found even though he might as an individual, his fate is 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 um, um, a negative. Obviously, um, he's still going away with something um, of value to him. He, he's he's protecting that piece that's important to him that she brought him basically. Yes, exactly. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, we got a few time for a few more way in the back here. Thank you. Uh, if I have a young woman in my apartment, <laughs> I wouldn't allow Mr. Aminu Hajaga Aminu to come <laughs> upstairs. I'll say, just come another time. I want to know why you did this. Um, <laughs> I think he was cornered. He was cornered. Yeah, you maybe you're smarter than Ali. Actually, <laughs> you seem to be. He's a very aggressive real estate agent too. So, yes. <laughs> you know, I would say he was cornered, but he shouldn't have. That's true. <laughs> he let his guard down because I think he felt he was maybe taking a chance of opening back up again in that moment. <laughs> so, another one more question over here. <clears throat> so, so many people are playing the game of comparing to other films. I thought I would throw in one more. The, the character of Ali reminds me more than anything of uh, Memories of Underdevelopment, where you have a character in the middle of a revolution going on all around him who, can't, who won't join in, who has the capability and probably good reason to leave, but he's just caught in a state of paralysis, kind of, and in, 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 in a progressive inability to take action. And they, they really seem very like very similar beings. Uh, memories under development. Mem memories of underdevelopment under in, in, in the Cuban Revolution. It, it's a memories set of in the Cuban Revolution. It's again, a Cuban again, film. Again. I have not seen it, but I know. I of haven't it. seen it. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I haven't seen it. I have to see it. Okay. <laughs> thank you. You, you. you should take a look. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Sepide, I want to thank thank you very much for coming. It's an honor to have you on our stage. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.